the schedule. Next up here is Jupiter. And then yes. I will, well, Diana can tell us about this. Should I uh, share screen now? Is that okay? Yes, please do. Okay, so how does it look like? Okay, I switch to you. And okay, so great. Looks I am going to uh, zoom in a little bit so that uh, you can see the content better. So hopefully this is okay. Yeah. So in the following 30 minutes or so, we are going to go through Jupyter and I will tell you what, how you can use Jupyter notebooks to build your own computational narrative, how you can use them in order to do uh, uh, code development and when Jupyter is not a good tool. So what are really the pitfalls of uh, Jupyter? And some of you that have been uh, using Jupyter before will find this very, very easy. So you can just sit back and relax for a while. But we do this so that everyone is on the web, uh, on the same page. Uh, as we, most teachers will be using Jupyter actually to, um, to uh, go through the teaching material. And uh, you should also be able to, uh, to use Jupyter in the directory to do your own uh, work after, after this lesson. And as I said, you won't be an expert, but, but hopefully you will find something useful. And uh, a fun thing to mention here is that this Jupyter lesson is actually written as a, a Jupyter notebook, and you can find the source on uh, GitHub if you're interested. And if you have suggestions for the lesson, I mean, you're more than welcome to create some uh, issues on uh, that repo. So uh, so what is Jupyter? Um, so Jupyter is most known for uh, for the Jupyter notebooks and the interfaces that uh, reason. So the Jupyter notebook and Jupyter lab and it's Jupyter lab, which we are actually going to use today. And the nice thing about it is that in your Jupyter no notebook, you can have both the input and the output of your code. And along with that, you can have documentation, and that's very useful, especially if you are, uh, if you want to share your code uh, to uh, someone else, because you can have a very descriptive um, uh, text, and you can interleave both uh, uh, text and documentation. Uh, sorry, uh, 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 text and uh, and code into one uh, notebook so that you can build your own computational narrative. And we'll go through some examples of that. Um, and uh, uh, Jupyter is great when, um, when you want to explore data, when you really want to do interactive uh, uh, work. And it's also great uh, when, uh, when you are teaching or you are presenting your uh, results to others. So uh, why we use uh, Jupyter? Um, first of all, it's a good uh, way of, uh, of presenting uh, uh, Python code, and also it because it minimizes the differences between different operating systems. So we want to make this as smooth as uh, possible for everyone following this course. So how do we work with uh, Jupyter notebooks? So I'm going to use the Jupyter Lab interface, and uh, the way I will do that is uh, go to a terminal. I'm going to activate um, uh, Conda as I do not activate it by default in my, on my uh, computer. Maybe some of you do that. So uh, then you can skip this uh, step simply. Yeah. And um, so I, um, when I, yes. Richard? Yeah, this is the standard Anaconda activation, which you could also do through Anaconda Navigator, I believe. Exactly, exactly. So <laughs> our basic idea is that I believe it's that Jupyter is sort of the standard interface, uh, not for everyone that uses Python, but for this course. So we hope that everyone's able to get it working. Mm -hmm. And this is like simple enough that we don't have to worry about installation issues. So, okay, yeah, sorry. And if so, you have the uh, mini cond, I mean, uh, you can of course uh, use that. And I will not be using the base, environment i will actually switch to the one that i have created for this course then we'll just type conda env list to list all my environments i only have two on this laptop and then i will just conda activate and the name of the environment and then i am good to <clears throat> open my jupyter lab <clears throat> sorry 
And um, so this is going to open a browser. Uh, I can also choose which browser or I want to open this in by uh, copy pasting this uh, HTTP link. I, as I have already opened it, I will just use uh, this one. So I'll move my windows a little bit. Okay, so uh, what, uh, what do we have uh, in the browser window? We have a menu bar on the left, which contains the, uh, what, some browser for the uh, file browser. I see all the um, notebooks I have uh, uh, when I, uh, well, in the directory where from my uh, started Jupyter Lab. There are some, uh, all, um, there is a tab for the kernels uh, that I have open. Uh, right now is none because I have not uh, opened any uh, any uh, uh, Jupyter notebook. And uh, and there is also a table of content. What this is, is actually, so if you write the markdown uh, text with different uh, levels of indentation, then you can actually scroll through different uh, parts of the Jupyter notebook in a very um, easy way by just clicking on that. I will show you later on when we actually have a notebook open. And then we also have uh, extensions. I will move this to the side now uh, so that we have more uh, space. In the main uh, window, so the launcher, I see uh, um, some uh, icons. Uh, basically, uh, there are icons for, for different um, what well, notebooks based on different um, um, kernels that I have installed on the system. In this case, uh, I have a Python 3. Uh, what does that mean? So when I uh, when I open my uh, notebook based on this kernel, all the code lines that I have in my Jupyter notebook are going to be interpreted by a Python 3 kernel. So let's uh, open that. And always it's a good practice to actually, well, save the, the notebook that uh, I am in. So I will save it as, let's say, First, Jupyter notebook. Okay, save. And then uh, you may see that uh, well, we are we have a very first so-called cell in this, and I um, I can uh, uh, have this uh, cell either as plain code. Or I can use, for example, Markdown, just as we use in the Hack and Lead, to write some uh, descriptive uh, text. And let's say I'm going to give it uh, um, a title. So uh, and I'm going to press Shift Enter in order to execute uh, this cell. So I will have a, a Markdown output and. I'm going to also create a new cell. Okay, so... Um, and this markdown is the same markdown we're using in HackMD. Exactly, exactly. Actually, yeah. And uh, let's see. We can also have... Uh, there are more examples actually here in the lesson material, how to format the text uh, in a nicer way by using either italics or uh, bold. And... Um, we can for let's uh, let's do some examples. For example, for uh, for code cell. So let's do a simple uh, for loop. So then uh, another nice thing uh, uh, about the notebooks is that uh, the syntax highlighting is is amazing. Of course, you yeah. can do that uh, using other tools as well. But I find it uh, very useful. And then uh, it's also automatic indentation. This is another great thing. And then let's just print all the numbers from uh, zero to one. And then again, shift enter to uh, to have the kernel um, um, interpret this, uh, this uh, cell. And then I just have the output. I can also do a print. Again, let's say I want to print several, well, a sum of uh, several numbers from, from zero to four. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, shift enter, and then I get the sum from all the numbers from zero to four, including as 
as the bound is uh, non, uh, non-inclusive in uh, Python. So uh, if we have, for example, an object, so I do not choose to print, but I, I, if I were just to type sum of range uh, from um, zero to four, and I choose uh, to, for example, do the same for, um, uh, let's say, uh, zero to nine. Then what happens, so shift enter again, is I'm only going to print the value of the very last object. If I want to print the value of both objects, then I would actually have to have uh, a print uh, a statement for both of these, or at least the one for the first one. So um, uh, another nice thing about the Jupyter Notebooks is that you can uh, include magic in your notebook. What, uh, what does that mean? So for example, if, um, if it's very useful if uh, you have a workflow that uh, includes doing some uh, bash scripting together with uh, running uh, Python codes. So um, I can use bash commands for uh, by including uh, a uh, percent, and uh, and then I can uh, have, for example, a bash command like I know, let's say uh, pwd, or uh, let's see, just show the the current directory, or if I want to use a bash script, which uh, well obviously will not fit into one line, then I can have a a, a double percent, and then I can uh, type bash. For some, it uh, may actually um, work better if you have sh instead of bash. And uh, mm-hmm. let's write, for example, um, a uh, small uh, bash script. Yes, Richard? I think this might not work on... Mm, well, if this doesn't work for you, don't worry, because it probably won't work on a Windows computer, but it's not needed. Yeah, I know it works on some Windows computers, but we have mm. uh, we've had persons in the past which were complaining about this. But try a stage if if bash doesn't work. Uh, yeah. I cannot guarantee it will, but uh, but uh, please try it out. Yeah. And then let's see, uh, just a uh, short uh, for loop. Let's print the sequence of numbers from one to three. And. Uh, Let's just print the value of these numbers and then stop. And then again, shift enter to uh, to execute this. So now we see that we actually execute, we get the output for uh, this uh, bash script. And this, uh, uh, I mean, um, magic is very useful uh, when you, when you want to, um, well, uh, when uh, when you want to work, uh, when you want to, for example, go into different directories in uh, in uh, um, on your laptop and uh, and uh, edit different files or or um, perform different operations uh, on your files uh, outside of your uh, Python script. Okay, so uh, if you want to see, for example, all the the magics which are um, available, you can type uh, ls magic. Okay, I didn't know of that, but that's uh, that's uh, quite cool. I also didn't yeah. know. I learned it fairly recently. But what are your uh, um, magic commands? Favorite magic commands, Richard? <laughs> well, I guess there's mainly it's time it. I'd say, which I think mm-hmm. we'll learn in the next lesson. Actually, yes, I see yes. it in exercise. So we actually and... have it in the second exercise. Mm-hmm. It's uh, yeah. actually it's very good. Uh, good uh, timing for that so we'll uh, we'll take like 15 minutes for exercises and uh, and it would be great if you do exercise one two and three the exercise number three is optional if you know um, if you've been using Jupyter before then you will find this uh, first exercise very very um, easy so you may just uh, skip it but uh, we we'll link the li- uh, we we'll link um, sorry we we'll add the link uh, to the exercises in the hack and lead. So please do one, two, and optionally three, uh, especially if you have been um, uh, using uh, 
Python and Jupyter a lot before. And uh, I, uh, I would just like to uh, say what you should do in the second exercise. So uh, uh, the idea is to uh, print out the Fibonacci numbers. And uh, what the Fibonacci number is, well, it's um, uh, the Fibonacci is a series and uh, the number uh, in, uh, in the series is the sum of the previous two numbers. There are many uh, uh, ways you can solve this exercise and uh, it's fun if you actually share uh, your solutions with, uh, with your uh, colleagues or maybe um, uh, in the hack and D. Um, doesn't have to be one solution, but, uh, but it's nice if you actually time uh, your different uh, solutions and see which one uh, is uh, fastest. Okay, so... Um, okay, good. So half an hour, I will switch to uh, HackMD 15 here. minutes for or, the Yeah, 15 minutes, sorry. <laughs> so now during these breaks, as you can see, there are the, um, we put an exercise note and it has the link and the instructions and another poll where you can ask, or you can say your status. Um, as usual, the questions continue at the bottom of the page. Uh, and this is until uh, 45, I believe. Yeah. OK, so we will hide ourselves now and see you in 15 minutes. Good luck. Keep asking questions. And bye. To Diana's screen. There you go. Hey then, so am I live now? Yes. Okay, great. So um, uh, before we wrap up <clears throat> this uh, session, I just want to uh, provide you with a quick solution to the Fibonacci exercise, and especially a very nice uh, assignment that uh, that one uh, one can do uh, in uh, Python. So. Um, um, what we start with is a um, initialization of the A and B variables. So the very first uh, two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. And then uh, um, let's say we want to print uh, the very first, uh, um, well, nine uh, numbers in uh, this sequence. So I can choose this to print, well, A, and then initialize um, the value for uh, for the next number as the sum of the two. So so the new A is going to be the previous B and the, the new B is going to be the sum of the um, old A and B. So basically we are going to have this sequence zero, one, the sum of zero and one, and then the sum of, uh, of the ones and so on. And um, if I want to time this, for example, uh, I want to uh, have uh, the all the numbers in uh, the first one million uh, Fibonacci numbers. I can use the time uh, uh, it magic, but please comment out the print uh, statement. Otherwise, you are going to get uh, an uh, error. And uh, what the time it will do is compute this uh, sequence of code several times in this case, uh, seven times, and it's going to uh, print the, the fastest run among these uh, seven. And uh, you can also specify options, for example, uh, dash R uh, 10, if you wanted to uh, do, for example, 10 uh, runs instead. And, um, and uh, with this, let's, uh, let's um, go through some uh, advantages and disadvantages of Jupyter. So when uh, do you want uh, to use uh, Jupyter? So it's great if you want to edit, check and then re-edit your uh, code in an interactive uh, way, instead of like uh, running it from the command line and opening it maybe in a terminal, you can just do everything uh, in, one, uh, in one window. And uh, um, as we said, it's nice that you can interlay both uh, code and uh, descriptive text. 
I should also mention that you can use uh, many different kernels instead of Python. I think there are something like more than 100 uh, kernels uh, available. So you can use um, use it, for example, if you you uh, if you run uh, C code or Fortran code or Julia. Really, there are lots of and lots of uh, kernels. And um, there are some nice examples. For example, the gravitational waves uh, uh, notebook, which is publicly available. It's nice uh, that uh, you can use it as a, as a teaching tool. Uh, you can actually also create uh, slides from Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, you can do some uh, Googling for that. But when is Jupyter not a good idea? So it's not so useful if you have a modular code. You can still do some uh, modularity with Jupyter Lab, but it's not uh, ideal. Um, it's also easy to test. And uh, they can be version controlled, but it's not uh, it's not uh, trivial. I mean, there are some uh, limitations uh, still. And um, also, you can change the code after you run it. And uh, well, this makes the debugging a bit hard, and it can re uh, result with reproducibility reproducibility if uh, if you are not being uh, careful. But uh, always make sure. I mean, you have a clean notebook, and then uh, and then you uh, you reset the kernel and run all cells uh, before you show your results. And what this reset of the kernel does is actually going to reset all the variables uh, of um, of the code, and then uh, run all the cells one by one. Okay, so uh, this is what I wanted to say about Jupiter. Richard, would you like to add something? Uh not really my hands have been a little bit full right now but mm -hmm. um yeah then uh, i think we uh, go into a break yes and uh, uh we come back at 10 past uh, uh 10 or uh, 10 past 11 if you are in finland and we it's, continue with numpy it looks like it's 10 minutes so a little bit shorter Mm -hmm. uh, three minutes past the hour, four minutes past okay. the hour. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. So Thanks, everyone. See you soon.